arrivare a pensare, sono molte formule, poi lascio il tempo che trovano, ma le conoscete tipo la flip classroom, vuol dire non è un'etichetta, è una logica. A quel punto provare a pensare a percorsi che siano di apprendimento appunto attraverso il formale, l'informale e non formale, in cui ciò che faccio a casa deve prevedere anche come, quanto e come tutto da decidere, ma l'attivazione dei genitori che a quel punto diventano parte integrante di un circuito che è comunicativo e didattico, che non vuol dire sminuire il momento formale dell'apprendimento a scuola. Oppure, dico genitori, ma in senso lato, lei giustamente ha citato, molti ragazzi sono impegnatissimi, fanno il corso di musica, il corso di ballo, il corso di basket, a quel punto coinvolgere i direi gli adulti, gli adulti in senso lato con cui i ragazzi stanno, o i giovani adulti. Chiaro, la sfida è quella, ma voi secondo me avete già un'ottima base di partenza, quella della reticolarità tra esperienze. Sarebbe molto interessante ragionarci seriamente, proprio rispetto esistono dei percorsi di questo tipo, al di là della serata per genitori sui problemi di internet, ovviamente, quella già, già si fa, ma far diventare anche loro prosumer, cioè sia noi insegnanti, sia eh, i genitori, sia gli studenti, devono avere la trasversalità di persone che fanno, sperimentano, confrontano, realizzano e in qualche modo il circuito non si ferma più. Il che non vuol dire cambiare i tempi della scuola, eh, ma provare a innestare alcuni elementi. Scusate, ma è una buona proposta. Grazie. Allora, adesso ascoltiamo la professoressa Petra Bogarkova, che eh, di italiano conosce più o meno tre parole, mi stava dicendo tipo buongiorno, ciao, and so how are you? Oh, yeah. Quindi cerca, you can speak slowly for us, very slowly. My level of English. Quindi eh, abbiamo, eh, questo, penso che abbiate la traduzione di alcune parole chiave, qualcosa che la dottoressa dice a noi. Tutti conoscete benissimo l'inglese, io mi ricordo qualche cosina. Ma l'argomento che tratta è molto interessante, cioè l'integrazione, come integrare le eh, nuove tecnologie nelle materie di studio, nel piano di studio. E quindi vediamo quali sono i suggerimenti. Ok, so hello everyone again. My name is Petra Bohačkova, I'm from the Czech Republic and I'm a teacher. I teach children who are from 12 to 15. I also work as an e-training ambassador in the Czech Republic and for the Czech Republic I am also future classroom lead ambassador. Um, here behind me you can see our school. It's one building but now, nowadays we are in three buildings because we are growing bigger and bigger. As you can see we have approximately 1,000 students which in the Czech Republic means that we are almost the biggest school in the Czech Republic. Uh, in our school system students stay in one building or even a in one school from 6 to 15, so it means that we have combined primary students plus lower secondary. Uh, our school is quite well equipped with ICT. We have in each classroom interactive whiteboard. We also have six interactive tables, uh, laptops for each teacher because uh, we are using only electronics, pupils book, it means it's a place where you write grades or marks of your students and where you can communicate with the teachers. Wait a moment. Volevo sincerarmi che seguite? C'è bisogno di far tradurre? No, e allora traducete a me. No. Chiedo, chiedo l'aiuto di qualche insegnante di inglese eventualmente, se non è chiaro qualcosa evidentemente lo segnalate e Francesca magari ci può aiutare, non Francesca, qualcuno che riesce a aiutare. Condividiamo la conoscenza e quindi che uno aiuti l'altro. Thank you. Ok, we also have iPads. Uh where teachers can borrow them and use them in the lessons and we are also building a classroom which is inspired by a future classroom lab. You can see it when you go to Brussels uh, 
to EU level. Here are some pictures. On the first picture you can see uh, some students working with interactive tables. Uh, and then you can see a, co a computer lab. We have got three of them. And uh, some sensors that you can use with iPads. And these are pictures from uh, our classroom, which is inspired by Future Classroom Lab. Um, you have heard a lot of about changing pedagogy, uh, not only using ICT. It's not ICT is like a tool, like a main thing, uh, and the pedagogy is the most important. And that's why we have decided to create this uh, Future Classroom. It's a classroom where you, where you can move the tables very easily, where you can uh, change the environment very easily, uh, you can put the chairs aside and you can see uh, four different, let's say, learning zones. Uh, teacher can say, okay, in this yellow zone, you will interact with the other students in this blue zone, you will create or you will shoot the video and so on. Uh, I integrate uh, some ICT in my lessons quite a lot, but uh, whenever I integrate ICT into my lessons, I think about uh, why am I doing it? Why am I using ICT for um, this particular uh, activity? Um, and I try to follow this model. It's called SAMR model, summer model. And uh, here you can see four phases. Um, substitution, it's the lowest level of using uh, ICT in your lessons. It means that instead of writing on a piece of a paper, you will write the text on board, for example. Augmentation means that you will use ICT to enhance the normal uh, board. For example, you can put a link and you can go to internet. The definition is the highest uh, level of using uh, ICT and it means that while using ICT you are creating uh, something which wouldn't be possible without using ICT before. Okay, and uh, our school was in a project, Creative Classroom Lab. And uh, from that time, we were working on a scenario which uh, has got seven steps. And here are the steps to follow. And you can hear it in this video. Creative Classrooms Lab is a European project focused on using tablets in classrooms. Its primary aim is to create model scenarios for tablets and to practice these scenarios in classrooms. Eight European countries joined this project. The involvement of the Czech Republic is coordinated by the Center for International Cooperation in Education. Projekt se začal připravovat v roce 2012, kde tablety v českých školách byly ještě úplnou novinkou. Učitelé je používali především pro svoji přípravu ve výuce. Nebyl pro ně problém je použít z technického hlediska, ale dokázali je využít z hlediska metodologie, čili jak smysloplně použít tablet ve výuce. Proto jsme se rozhodli zapojit Českou republiku do tohoto projektu a ukázat učitelům cestu, jak by mohli tablety ve výuce používat. 
The basis of the Creative Classrooms Lab project is the creation of scenarios which can be used in any subject. Their general content enables teachers to adapt these scenarios according to their specific needs, taking into account the school curriculum, the age, the level of pupils and the subjects taught. Za náš sportu school collaboration umožní žákům spolupracovat s jinou školou, s jinou třídou, nejenom v České republice, ale i v zahraničí. Díky tomu se mohou kontaktovat se svými evropskými nebo českými spolužáky, mohou si do výroky poslat nějakého experta na danou problematiku, nebo mohou třeba jít stavlat i ven a realizovat tedy ten scénář a podmínka, který vyžaduje. Elementary school Dr. Edvarda Benesha in Čakovice and its seven graders were one of the first classes to join the project. Their partner is a school in Slovakia, with which they've been cooperating for many years using e-twinning. Náš scénář je tedy zaměřen na fyziku a my jsme s nimi diskutovali, co by je zajímalo. Vybrali si rychlost plaštové, protože si nikdo, že ještě nemohl plaštové skládat a vyvážet návody. Spolupráce probíhá v nocí tabletů, které umožňují spolupráci v mezinárodní skupině a vzniklé výstupy žáci mohou okamžitě sdílet s ostatními spolužáky či kamarády. Both partner schools use different types of tablets, and for that reason they prefer to use applications and tools which are typical for all types of tablets, for example tools for making videos or taking photos. Aplikaci TEC, která slouží k blogování, žáci si tam mohou psát své blogové příspěvky a zároveň se i komentovat. Ta aplikace se jmenovala Google Dokumenty, které umožňují žádnou spolupráci. Výstupy z těchto aplikací sdílíme na projektování třídě Twinspace, která je potom dostupná každému projektu, který je zaregistrován. The school-to-school -school collaboration scenario is divided into seven stages. Each of them has a title which represents the key word of the activity in the given stage. První část, která se nazývá Dream, žáci je společně s učitelem a společně s partnerskou školou vybírají téma, které by si chtěli ve svém projektu. V druhé fázi, která se nazývá Explore, Žáci vyhledávali různé typy plaštové, návody na jejich skládání, také se zabývali otázkou, jaké faktory ovlivňují to, jak rychle je to pomoční V rámci třetí fáze, která se nazývá MEP, jsme naše získané poznatky sdíleli s partnerskou školou. K tomuto sdílení jsme mimo jiné použili i nástroj pro pro žáky nejzajímavější fáze byla fáze čtvrtá, která se nazývá MIG a v této fázi žáci vyráběli maštovky, tvořili návody o to, jak postupovat při V páté části, která se nazývá FAS, mě maštovky vyzkoušeli a vybrali tu maštovku, která se vyráběli. There are two remaining stages to complete. In the sixth stage, called Remake, pupils in the international working groups will create one universal set of instructions for creating a paper play. And in the last stage, called Show, the Czech school wants to organize a meeting of pupils and parents to share the things they learned. Their partner school in Slovakia will join them using an online form of communication. However, these activities are not the only ones these seven graders participated in during the school year. As part of the project, the pupils visited the Václav Havel Airport and the Air Tunnel, where they could experience flying on their own. Myslím si, že hlavním přínosem tohoto projektu je zjištění, že tam ty domínky patří, že zde mají své místo a že umožňují žákům, aby byly ve vyučování aktivní a výuka je dobrá.
Okay. So here are some activities which we do in our classrooms. First activity, which I think is very good for using in e-training uh, for the first meeting when the children from the other school, from the schools that don't know, don't know each other, is a Mr. Escape or Hangout. Mystery means like mystery, <laughs> and the other words means the meaning via Skype or via Hangout, you meet each other. Uh, the aim is to find where the second school or second children are from, uh, not only the country but also the city. Uh, from the rules I would mention that the questions they ask in turns, uh, it, these must be yes-no questions, the answer can be only yes or no. And uh, this type of mystery Skype or hangout can be done synchronously. It means that at the certain time, on the certain day, uh, children meet, but you can do it uh, with the students from all over the world, so maybe time zones are against you, so you can do it asynchronously. And it means that you will ask questions and you will say some clues to your partner. You upload the video on YouTube and you share the video with the, with the partner. They listen, they respond and again they will upload the video for you. Here you can see examples of some questions. And here you can hear some clues about the Czech Republic. There is a very old university of Sydney. Her school is in the first apartment. One more from our country was in this place. There are one hundred of towers in house. There are a twenty-four letters in all alphabet. One river in all In our country, love, drink, Our country invented a word that is used in many languages. Okay, so these were the clues which we sent to the partner school and they answered and we also uh, got some clues from them, so uh, we answered and our first guess that was that they are from Canada and we were right. Um, I, I made a note here that preparation for Mr. Sky or Hangout is very important. Uh, um, we prepare questions before we do Mr. Skype. Um, it's a very nice discussion to have with students. So maybe they, they are able to say, question, do you like your school? But it's a very nice discussion to have with the student. Is it an important question? Do you know, uh, will you know uh, something about the school if they say yes or no? And I think it's very uh, useful to have this type of discussion with the children. I have heard that there is another type of mystery sky. It's called mystery numbers. Uh, you are looking for, when you meet with the second class. You look for a mystery number, but I have never tried, so I have no experience about it. So maybe if you teach math, you can look for it. Uh, 
In our lessons we are also using videos and we try to use them in a not uh, typical way. Uh, here we prepared a video for learning vocabulary. Alessandra, qui appare la dottoressa Tosi. 